Hey, welcome back to the Living in Vancouver and Camas Washington YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be going over all the neighborhoods in Vancouver, Washington. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to the Living in Vancouver and Camas Washington YouTube channel. If you're new here, you can subscribe and hit the bell to be the first person to know about all things living in Vancouver and Camas Washington. And today we're gonna to be talking about um, all the neighborhoods in Vancouver, Washington, which is awesome. So I'm not going to be going over every single subdivision in Vancouver. Of course, that would be hundreds of neighborhoods and we would never finish. Um, but we, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be looking at like the general neighborhood pockets. So like Falida, Salmon Creek, Cascade Park, Fisher's Landing, those type of areas in Vancouver. And um, if you're not familiar with the area, hopefully this gets you familiar with the area and if you are then hopefully this gives you some new knowledge so let's go okay hey so we are on the vancouver map right now and just so you know this whole area outlined in red is the vancouver city limits and um, anything outside of that kind of in this darker gray color is unincorporated vancouver but it's still a part of vancouver so just want to let you know that okay let's pop into it so First, we're gonna take a look at Fisher's Landing. Now, maybe you've heard of the Fisher's Landing area. This is kind of the general area right here. It's between 164th Ave and 192nd Ave. I talk about those two a lot because that's where we have a lot of our main shopping areas. And Fisher's Landing's relatively new. It was pretty much all built in the last 20 years. Um, <clears throat> we have Fisher's Landing Elementary School right here and that is one of the most desirable elementary schools, so people love it for the schools. This is an Evergreen Public School District, which is a, a really great school district. Um, right here we have the Vancouver Innovation Center, which is an area that's gonna be developed in the future. It's gonna have everything from commercial to residential, multifamily, single family, um, restaurant shops, everything. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes out in the next decade or so. And home prices here, I mean, they're getting expensive now. I would say they're in the mid 500s at the low end to like 800. Of course, it can go up from there as well. Um, but this is just a really prime location because all these neighborhoods here, like you can just pop over to 164th and Mill Plain. This is Mill Plain Boulevard right here and 164th and um, they are all just great areas to go shopping and everything you need is over there. So that is Fisher's Landing. Let's head over to Cascade Park. <clears throat> so Cascade Park is right here in this corner. This whole area is Cascade Park here. It's uh, west of 164th, south of Mill Plain Boulevard. This is Mill Plain Boulevard here east of 205 and right above the 14. So um, we have kind of two parts to Cascade Park. South of McGilvery is down here and this is an area with some bigger homes like I would say three car garages, 3,000 plus square feet, not all of them but some of them, um, nicer finishes, that kind of thing. And then north of McGilvery we have some smaller homes, uh, just a little bit more basic. We have like 90s built homes up here and then down here we've got a lot of more 70s and 80s. We also have Fairway Village right here in yellow and that is a 55 and older community on a golf course. We really don't have a lot of 55 plus communities besides um, manufactured home parks so a lot of people really love this one and it's just been amazing the last couple of years. And, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time in this neighborhood, and even though it's really close, it looks like it on the map to the 14 and the 205, as long as you're not, like, right on the freeway, it's pretty quiet when you're, you're in here. So it's nice, and it's just a super accessible location. You know, you can pop over to, um, to Oregon in, like, seven, eight minutes. You can be from here to here. So that's great. Cascade Park right there. Very well-established neighborhood. All right, now let's take a look at Evergreen Highway. So Evergreen Highway, oh, hopefully you guys can see the yellow. Bear with me because I have not done this little painting on thing before. and It's fun. Um, let's switch to pink here. So this is Evergreen Highway right here. And you can see 
it literally says Southeast Evergreen Highway right there. So that was the highway before the 14 came around and now it's kind of just a road. Um, but this is a beautiful place to be. We have houses all along the Columbia here. As for price point right now, um, you're looking at, I'd say around 1.5 million if, here, let me zoom in for a second. <clears throat> so, Evergreen Highway right here. Um, if you are north of Evergreen Highway, between Evergreen Highway and the 14, you're looking at like in the million to like $1.5 million range, $2.5 million range. And then if you want to be on the waterfront, like waterfront access, which there are a limited number of those, um, of those homes, you're looking at like the $3 million plus range. And so um, it's a really fabulous place to be. I love going in the homes down there that are right on the waterfront. It's just, it's so fabulous. Um, we do have this one neighborhood that I will touch on briefly. It's called Steamboat Landing. It is right here, it's gated. That's why it's grayed out on the Google Maps. And um, you have access to docking your boat if you live in that neighborhood. And it's one of very few like subdivisions that's down here on the Columbia. So highly sought after there for sure. If you like to boat, talk to me about living in Steamboat Landing. <laughs> um, let's move on from Steamboat Landing to kind of the Vancouver Heights area, Father Blanchett Park, Southcliff, Edgewood Park, all those areas right here. So I would say that this location is not super strong on like a location basis. Um, you know, people aren't like, oh, I live in Vancouver Heights and I'm super proud about it, which is fine. Um, but there's plenty of beautiful houses in here. It's really a mixed bag because these are older communities like 70s, 80s, some remodeled homes, some not remodeled homes. It's mostly no HOA. And um, this is like a hill. So as you go this way, the, um, you get higher up and as you go more towards the water you get lower down so some of these homes do have really nice views if they're not blocked by trees and things um, but it's a good place to be if you find the perfect house that you want you can see we have a lot of parks park there park there park there park there this is a really big park David Douglas Park it's a good one for walking and everything and you're close to um, to the hospital if that's important to you for some reason so that's good <clears throat> let's move on we are going to go to downtown. So downtown, let's talk about downtown. I would consider downtown to be, this is Mill Plain Boulevard right here. It goes all through throughout Vancouver. You can see it's right here. I would consider Mill, um, south of Mill Plain Boulevard to be downtown. Okay, so like this whole area right here. And then on the west side of 205. Right here, we have the Vancouver waterfront. If you have not already seen the Vancouver waterfront, it's really beautiful and it got redone uh, just over the last couple years and it really is a centerpiece of our community. Amazing restaurants down there and um, there's wineries and there's luxury condos going up. There's a brand new hotel that's going to go up. So this is going to be a great spot to hang out. Definitely increasing values down there. Um, pretty much the only homes that we have in this area would be condos. There's not really single family homes in the downtown and, um, you know, commercial buildings. We've got restaurants. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what we can see. Um, we have Esther Short Park, which is kind of like the staple park for Vancouver. Um, and it's been really nice in the past. Unfortunately, we are having more homeless problems in the downtown area than I'd like to admit. Um, Someone just lit the park on fire not that long ago, which is really sad. But we have a lot of really great restaurants here. Um, let's see, some of my favorites are Amaro's Table. Table is really good for drinks. Mighty Bowl is good, but they're shutting down, which is super sad. Little Conejo is one of my favorite taco spots. I love it there. There's a barbecue place right here that's really good. Um, so if you like to walk and you like the nightlife, this is probably the place for you. Downtown and Uptown are the only places in Vancouver that are really walkable friendly. So speaking of Uptown, let's let's look at Uptown now. 
So I'd consider Uptown to be north of Mill Plain, all the way up to 39th Street. So that is the general Uptown area. And um, it is, it's a really great place to be if you like to walk, as I mentioned. So you can see on the map here that we have the alleyways that, you know, the, sh uh, the streets are shorter than usual. And that's because these homes are like 100 years old, 100 years plus. This is one of the few areas that you'll find that in Vancouver. It's one of the original areas. So if you like that cute, quaint, um, two bedroom type of deal, this is definitely the spot for you. You're not going to find a lot of two bedrooms elsewhere. And um, you can walk like right here on Main Street is where a lot of the stuff is right there. So, you know, we have the Arnotta neighborhood over here, Hugh, Carter Park, um, really a mixed bag if I'm being honest. You can go to one house and it's absolutely beautiful. It was a tear down, you know, they, they tore down the old house that was on it and they built something new. And then you go to the next house and it's falling apart like literally falling apart and then you go to the next house and it's maybe something old that's been really well preserved and then you go to the next house and it's also falling down so um, definitely an interesting area if you come to Vancouver I would recommend you drive around and see it for yourself or check out some of my driving tour videos I've done in the area but if you like to walk uptown or downtown that is the place for you Rose Village is right over here I'll just touch on it briefly since it's up here you can see that it's got those same alleyways and uh, and Fourth Plain Village, I'll put that in there, they're basically the same. Um, same alleyways, homes are super old again, 100 years old. Um, not my favorite area, you know, you get some, some traffic from people, homeless people coming off the 500 or the I-5. Um, but yeah, older, cute, quaint homes in the area again. But if I was going to choose to live in this downtown area, I would I would live in Uptown on the west side of I-5. I would not live in Rose Village or Fort Plain Village. Let's move on to the Lakeshore area. So Lakeshore is right up here. And if you didn't know, we do have a lake in Vancouver. It's called Vancouver Lake. There it is. And Vancouver Lake is not really a lake that you would swim in. Um, there's been lots of algae problems in the past, but it's beautiful to look at and you can drive around it here on Lakeshore Ave. Oops, I covered it. Sorry. Um, most of the land around the lake is protected, probably owned by the city or something of the sorts, the county. I'm not sure, but um, basically we don't have a lot of homes on the lake. The only ones I know of are right here. Other than that, you're separated by this road, but Lakeshore is on a hill, so it goes up as you go this way. So you can probably picture it. These homes have great views of the lake, which is a lot of what draws people to the area. Older homes, you know, it's an established area, 70s, 80s, 90s. Some of them can be outdated, um, but with some cosmetic work, they'd be really fabulous. And they've got those big picture windows, which you're not gonna find that elsewhere. You, you know, you can't get that view anywhere else. So this is a good place to be if maybe, um, you know, say maybe you wanted a water view, but you don't have a $3 million budget for down in the Columbia. Well, if you have more of a 800 to $1.5 million budget, you could probably find something here. So nice place to be as well. Let's move on to Philida. If you have been looking at Vancouver for a while, you probably know a little bit about Philida. And this is the upper northwest corner of Vancouver. This is like, you know, Vancouver is pretty much ending right around this area. And um, Philida actually used to be a farm. And this is a really new area to the city. It was developed just about 10 years ago. It was Philida Family Farm, I believe. And so a lot of new development in the area. And um, it's, really, it's really become strong on the location. Like people are really proud to live in Philida. Um, good schools in the area and um, sorry I'm trying to figure out my thing here goodness good schools in the area not a lot of shopping directly in Philida you have some some shops like little local stuff on Lakeshore Ave but mostly people go over to Hazeldell and this whole area right here which I'll, I'll talk about in a second 
they go to this area to do like most of the shopping but definitely a great family area for people up here and they really love Falida. It's got a great name and Falida is going to hold its value really well over the next decade or so for sure. Um, while I mentioned Hazel Dell, you know, let's just talk about Hazel Dell. So another one of the main shopping areas in Vancouver is Hazel Dell right here. It goes up and down I-5 and Highway 99. Um, Hazel Dell area is like this area right here yeah and this is the shopping so every store you can imagine is right here you can see Petco, Wendy's, Buffalo Wild Wings all the grocery stores that you need there's local things there's big chains everything's right there which is great um, in terms of housing in Hazel Dell like totally a mixed bag again you get condos you get attached homes you get a lot of small new developments you get homes that have been there for a long time so it's just kind of been developed as people sell off their land parcels and it's definitely not a quiet area to be like Philida is is more of like a quiet people just live there kind of place you know 99th 88th and 78th are really busy roads so people are just always cruising through um, but definitely a good place to be as well <clears throat> let's talk about Salmon Creek Salmon Creek, right here, you can see it on the map, is, I would say, this area where I-5 and 205 converge. I-5 here, 205 here, um, and you know, um, shopping commerce center here as well. Definitely not anywhere near as big as Hazel Dell, but um, convenient place to be. We've got the Salmon Creek Hospital here, and this is actually, so Salmon Creek is actually right here. This is Salmon Creek. That's where the area name comes from. There are some houses over here, like in Philida and stuff, that back up to the creek, and they're really beautiful. Like, just imagine backing up to a protected creek would be amazing. Um, oh, sorry, that got kind of messy quick. But, yeah, people really like Salmon Creek. Again, kind of a mixed bag because you're coming here, everything's converging here, so... You need to get some new development, you get some older homes, um, you're close to Washington State University, which is good. But another area that's going to hold its value well, people are really proud to live in Salmon Creek. Higher income area, you know, 600000 plus for, for single family homes now, I would say. And yeah, it's going to hold its value well. <clears throat> okay, where else do I want to touch on? Let's talk about Minnehaha really quickly. Mini Haha -ha is right here. And then this area over here on the other side of St. John's is West Mini Haha. -ha. There's not nearly as many homes over here, but uh, Mini Haha -ha is definitely a mixed bag. This is an old area of town, probably 50s, 60s homes in here. Um, but then you've got the new developments that have been sprinkled in as people have sold off their land. And so, you know, the homes that are on little tiny parcels of land and really close next to each other and then maybe the next home next door is a rambler from the 60s or the 70s and then the next home next door is a teardown and it's um, a $900,000 home but it's a fun place to be it's very flat uh, not a lot of hills in the area and yeah there's really not much else to say about it um let's talk about Let's talk about orchards. Okay, so orchards is over here on the east part of Vancouver. And this is an area where we have a lot of no HOA neighborhoods. Um, I see like a lot of ramblers and just, just neighborhoods where you can kind of do your own thing. So if that is your style, um, this might be a good area for you to look in. We have shopping and commerce right here as well. This is a continuation of the 500. This goes up to Battleground. We have lots of shopping and commerce right here on the continuation of the 500, which goes up to Battleground. Please erase, there we go. Um, you can see Battleground's up there, Brush Prairie, all those areas. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really all there is to orchards. Um, quick and easy to the 500 so that's nice uh, let's talk about brush prairie 
and let's talk about Hawkinson too. Brush Prairie and Hawkinson. So these areas are, well, Brush Prairie is technically not part of Vancouver. Let me say that. Um, Brush Prairie has its own address. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, four Banana Street, comma Brush Prairie. And Hawkinson is an area of Brush Prairie. Um, Hawkinson has its own school district, but Brush Prairie does not have its own school district. So it gets kind of confusing. But you can see, based off of looking at the map, that um, you're not seeing a lot of subdivisions in the area, and that's because this is a rural area. So if you want to live on acreage, you're probably going to live somewhere like um, the outskirts of Battlegrounds, or you're going to live in Hawkinson, or you're going to live in Brush Prairie. Hawkinson is known for having good schools. They only have a few schools, but they're really new, and they're um, rated well. And then, like I said, Brush Prairie goes to a couple different school districts. But if you want to live on acreage, this is probably the area that you're going to end up. <clears throat> um, what else? I mean, we've pretty much made our full circle all the way around. Uh, let's just talk briefly about the image area. So I show a lot of uh, starter homes in the image, north image area right here. Um, this is an area that does not have HOAs. These are older homes, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. A lot of three bed, two bath ramblers in the area. And if you have like an RV or a boat or something that you wanna have out and you don't want the HOA bothering you, this might be a good area for you to end up in. Um, it is a little bit of a trek to get in, you know, like, let me zoom out here for you guys. If you're living in here, you know, you got to drive over to 162nd and then that turns into 164th and then you get down here for your shopping or you go down to Mill Plain or you have to drive here to the 500 and you got to go up there and it takes longer than you think, um, but a good place to be for sure. So that pretty much covers all of the main areas of Vancouver. I hope that gave you a nice overview of the city and maybe helps you dial in a little bit more where you think will be the best fit for you. If you are moving to the area or you're thinking about moving to the area and you have questions or you want some help, I'd love to hear from you. I help people every day who are moving to Clark County, Washington, and I will see you next time. Bye.